Hello and welcome to Nurse's Handbook. Have you ever wondered how does an infection occurs? Here is what you need to know. In order for the transmission of an infection to occur, all of the following elements must be present. First is the pathogen. It can be any virus, bacteria, fungi, parasite, etc. And this is known as the infectious agent. Second element is the reservoir. So a reservoir is where the organism can live, thrive and replicate. Example, person, soil, animal, food, water, etc. Third element is the route of exit. An exit route for the pathogen to escape its reservoir. For an example, if human being is the reservoir, then portal of exit can be urine, vomit, sputum, blood, feces, etc. Fourth element is the mode of transmission. The mode of transmission can be through direct contact or indirect contact. The direct contact transmission is when a disease causing microorganism passes from the infected person to a healthy person via direct physical contact with blood or body fluids. Examples of direct contact are touching, kissing, sexual contact, etc. The second mode of transmission is through indirect contact. When a pathogen spread to a host through suspended air particles, formates or vectors such as mosquito, fleas, etc., it is known as indirect contact. The fifth element is the portal of entry, that is, infectious agents getting into the body. Pathogens often enter the body of the host through the same route they exited the reservoir. Airborne pathogens from one person's sneeze can enter through the nose of another person. Our last element is the susceptible host which is the final link in the chain of infection. All organism cannot cause disease or infect all human beings. Instead, it causes infection in those who have low immunity like HIV peoples, TB patients, elderly, children and pregnant women. So, by linking all these elements in a chain, it makes an infection cycle. Thank you for watching. For more updates like this, do like, comment and subscribe the channel Nurses Handbook.